and we are live welcome everybody to the daily advantage podcast today we have mr steven bilko Morning. um how you doing man beautiful fantastic good how to hear you? how are you guys i'm good a little tired but we're good life's good yeah um so steve is a really interesting guest because we've been working not necessarily with him but kind of alongside him and now with him for i don't know a while yeah probably like two eight months or something like, yeah i mean yeah that's where we initially met him yeah um so S- steve is actually logan's uncle so that's how we kind of got uncle. connected <laughs> yeah and um so steve tell us a little about a little bit about yourself so i am born and raised in central pa central pennsylvania yeah rural cambria county pennsylvania tiny little small town Patton, pennsylvania and I am the proud uh, son of Ann and Dan Bilko, two public school teachers, the youngest of seven kids. I'm number wow. seven out of seven. So I have four older brothers, two older sisters, and just grew up in a small town, went yeah. to Penn State, proud Penn State graduate, and then like a bunch of people from Central PA just moved to Northern Virginia and kind of started my life down there and did a bunch of stuff in Northern Virginia, small businesses. I was a public school teacher for three years in Northern Virginia and then worked with a bunch of other small businesses before my wife and I took the plunge and started our own business in 2016 called right. Exercise Simple. And that's kind of, I mean, that's how we got connected. Yep. Um, because so exercise simple (coughs) i'll let you explain it but um it's built around exercise and we are now working alongside you guys on the video content stuff like that proud partners yeah yes sir so tell us about exercise Simple. so exercise simple is the culmination of of having coached thousands of people for a decade plus in the you know personal training space in the group training space big box change gyms uh coaching people in their basements and realizing that there's this huge need for normal, realistic, authentic exercise for, for the vast majority of folks. So in uh, 2016, literally two days after Mary and I had our second baby, we took the plunge and took a huge leap of faith forward and, 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 you know, kind of put our money where our mouth was and started our own thing and and exercise simple from that point was really trying to find some business partners and some funding to make what is now our our live beta platform. We have a live app on the app store on both app stores uh, called exercise simple and it's 30 minute equipment free workouts for for normal people. We filmed it in our home. Um. We've been downloaded thousands and thousands of times. We have teammates in 72 different countries right now, which I think is the coolest darn thing in the world. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> and uh, every single day I get to wake up and connect with people all over the world who just want to be happier and healthier and stronger. And so, uh, you know, the, the good Lord put me on this earth to help people. And, you know, I'm super, super proud and excited that that's, that's pretty like, I get to do every day. So uh, how long did you have the idea for Exercise Simple before you, like, started it in 2016? Yeah, when did that spark start? That sp- that years, years. That spark, uh, one of the small businesses that I was working with, I had, I was their director of business development, and I had a lot of relationships with Fortune 500 companies. And so we can track this back to, 2012 2013 okay you know literally being in the headquarters of a fortune 500 company and being in one of you know it's like a surreal movie moment you're in these high rises and huge conference room overlooking everything and you know i remember them saying you know what can you do for our they have ninety thousand worldwide employees right like how can you help all of them and you know the teacher in me the coach in me was like technology we could we can come up with a way to to use technology and you know co- come up with something super super cool yet super super simple like uh the book that i was reading at the time was the steve jobs book and the quote is uh simplicity is the ultimate sophistication and so yeah since 2012 2013 mary and i have been my wife and i have been just really really 
just drilling down on how can we make something really, really awesome and yet really, really simple. So we got, we actually started the, like the, the branding and the logo work with a creative team in Northern Virginia, I think in, in 2012, 2013. So that would be what, three, two, three years before we even started the actual, let's go out and try to make a business. We definitely, something was there. yeah, the groundwork was, was years in the making. Wow. So, I mean, that's the, that's kind of the key of it. That's simple. That's like, I mean, from what we've been working on, like from a marketing standpoint, I think that's like the kicker is that it really is like, I mean, as soon as you open the app, you're greeted with like a, what's up? Here's the workout. And it's like personal connection too. You can automatically see that because you're automatically greeted by like, you know, a message from coach Steve. Right. That was, that was our biggest thing in terms of making the user experience was all of these apps and platforms, whether it's in the exercise space or not, it's like as soon as you download them, they want your email address or your credit card or something. Yeah. And our our obstacle as a coach and as someone who just wants to help people is eliminate all of the barriers to get people in, into the help that they're looking for, right? Someone yeah. downloads your product, they, they're in the app store looking for help. And the last thing that I want to do is scare them off by trying to say, give me your information. Yeah. And so – no different than whenever I was coaching in a health club. If I saw you or you in the health club, I'd come up and say, hey, just just hop in, you know, join join the group with us. I wouldn't say, Gavin, Logan, what's your credit card number? <laughs> yeah. You know, like, here, sign up here. And so that's what we did is we built everything so that we could have people in a, in a very welcoming way come into the team from install download to actually being in their first workout is less than a minute and so that was one thing that we really 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 tried to spend a lot of time on making sure that we streamline that user process and that if people can exercise anonymously which is super super cool that they don't have to give up their information they don't have to make a profile they don't have to provide an email address and they can always show up and exercise with us yep so interesting what's the process of building the app if you can speak more to that that's How's something that I'm interested in. And how long has it taken? The technology port yeah, was, yeah. for me, this was one of the ones that I am I am the non-technical You're tech the co-founder, right? right? Yeah. Like, So this is one of these things of having this this vision and then trying to go out and, and literally <laughs> find people to fill in the gaps. And so in 2017, in the fall, of, this time around 2017, we got commitment from um, our partners for, for a sizable amount of money. And we needed to go out and find technical partners. And we were working with a group, and it, and it, I, I, I would whiteboard everything for them, and yeah. I, and I would show them what the streamline was, and they just weren't, they weren't clicking. It was a lot of whiteboards. It yeah. was a lot of brain dumps, and it was a lot of trying to get people to understand how streamline I wanted it. And the team that we were working with just wasn't getting it. Frankly, they like it just wasn't making a lot of sense for them. And so. Interestingly enough, like in November of 2017, I just put out on Facebook, hey, do I know anybody that builds apps? Hmm. Mary and I have a huge following on Facebook yeah. even before this. Do I know anybody that builds apps or, or you know, mobile applications, mobile platforms? And one of one of my friends from high school, I mean, someone I grew up with that my family used to vacation with and, the, you know, we go camping together. Um, his wife, Kristen, messaged me and she's like, this is what Andy does. And Andy Ivory um, is a, is a partner and a founder in, in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina in the research triangle. And I'm like, no way. He was a big time guy at IBM, spun it off, went and started his own shop. And so I'm like, Kristen, give me his, give me his mobile. And so to answer your question a little more fully, Andy and I had an hour call in, um, it was December 1st of 2017. I said, Hey, look, our third child was on the way in the next week. And, Um, Kendall was born December 8th and a week later I drove to North Carolina and spent all day with Andy and Eric and Chris and all of these guys on the team, whiteboarded everything. And so from that moment, from December of 2017, and then it took about a year until we were actually fully approved, you know, through the app store process. And it was having a remote team in North Carolina. It was, it was a lot of Skype calls and a lot of phone calls because obviously I couldn't go down there all the time. So yeah. it, it was a, it was a good portion of a, of a year to get idea to what they call as your MVP, your minimal viable product to actually to get it to the marketplace. 
So, um, what about the hustle? Because I feel like, you know, you have two kids, a third one on the way, and you're trying to build a business. A lot of us entrepreneurs want to talk about hustle, but that seems like the peak hustle. It's like no excuses. Like you're a father of two already. You have another one on the way and you're starting an app. That's like pretty ambitious. Yeah. What is that? Like, <laughs> so, I mean, that's got, that's rooted, you know, and for most people, it, it has to be if you're doing really what you want to do um, without like the outside voices and stuff. So like, where did that start? Because I mean, you're through and through, you want to help people. Obviously, you're not going to put all these years into something that is built around helping people. So where, do, where does that start in, in Steve? Well, there's two different things that you guys are kind of throwing at me. Yeah. Um, I, Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the hustle, the, the inner fire, the spark, uh, it just comes genuinely from me seeing other people in this world take what they want from the world. And, and this world is anything that you make of it. Yeah. And, and the, you know, the bumper sticker of this world is what you make of it. Go get it. Um, when I was teaching, I had a, I had a poster on the wall that said the value of life lies not in the length of the days, but the use we make of them. And for me, that was something I talked to my young kids, talk to you guys about all the time. Like, Hey, I can't promise anything other than that sun's going to come up tomorrow and the highs and the lows, everybody in this world is going to go through them. What are you going to make of them? And so uh, for me, it's not a financial thing. For me, it's a self-fulfillment thing of I don't know how many days I'm going to be on this earth, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to give it my best. My dad, who um, passed away in 20, uh, 2015, just a hard, hardworking guy, and his thing was you may never be the best, but you can always give your best. That's what he told me when I was playing sports, when we were doing academics, that kind of thing. And so for me uh, – all of this is realizing that I have the opportunity of a lifetime, a perfect storm of great network, being right outside of Washington, D.C., incredible resources and capital, and having the talent to be able to push through. Um, it, was, it, was, it was a self-actualization of, of saying, I can do this. And, you know, the, the crazy leap of faith is looking kind of what Logan said, my wife, who, you know, God love her, I mean – she's she's married to this crazy guy with these crazy crazy dreams yeah and she's the most supportive person in the world you know she, everything i always say that, that every single one of the countries that we're in we're only in because my wife she's the team captain of this whole thing yeah. right um so it's the the long answer is i don't i don't know where it comes from none of my family is you know, small business owners, uh, the six, my six siblings, they're all like regular W2 employees, yeah. which is fine and dandy. They've, yeah. they've created six different ultra successful paths in this world. And for me, it was looking at um, my siblings and being like, man, they're super successful at X, Y, and Z. Imagine I can take their life experiences and go, you know, where I want to go. So the, the long non-answer answer <laughs> You, so on like the so you're seventh on the on the seven order of, yeah I'm here. number seven Lucky you number think seven. that has to play in like this competitive because the world of business is they nobody cares you know like you make what you make and you'll just get eaten alive if you don't you know if you don't try hard enough so like it do you think that it could spur from that competitive nature of just growing up and always being last not always well, wow. <laughs> um, in the number sense, in the number sense, I think if you put that wire under, yeah, like that, yeah, very, very interesting in our family dynamic is that we're at, out of the seven, five boys, two girls, we're each other's best friends and yet we're each other's biggest competitors. Right. And so that's important, you know, in, in a sense, you know, having four older brothers that kind of pushed you around is good it, yeah it it makes I, I i tell people i'm bulletproof man like you you can't you can't you can't hurt me you can't harm me um everything that i've been through prepared me for that moment of what you're saying business is cutthroat people don't care yeah and so i think that then in that element absolutely that you're you're kind of hardened callous if you will um but then in, in the exact same sense like i said um one of my older siblings, brother in the military, brother who's a firefighter. These these people literally 
are doing exactly what they wanted to do since they were kids. Yeah. And so you just kind of sit back and look and say, it wasn't super easy, but they followed their dream to, to do what they want to do. Yeah. And so for me, that was a big portion of quiet the noise, quiet the environment and listen to your heart, listen to your soul and just go for it. And, you know, everybody in this world goes through the ups and downs. Yeah. It's controlling how you function through those ups and downs. Speaking of ups and downs, me and Gavin last podcast, we uh, talked about like failure and how it's like been, you know, like the biggest teacher to us. Can <clears throat> any like failures in the process of building exercise simple that like really is uh, like, you know, Oh yeah. A bunch like how, like formed you or like stuck out to you and really helped you, <sighs> man. I, how I many fail. punches in the gut were, uh... I, yeah, <laughs> I, I fail every single day. I mean, and that's like, again, one of those things that the, the cool marketing aspect of Michael Jordan says, you know, I have failed and failed and failed again. And that is why I succeed. And it looks great on a poster. Yeah. <laughs> but like the vast majority of folks in this world that they don't want to buy into that concept of like, no, you're truly failing on the daily. And I can't tell yeah. you, um, how many times we've sent pitch decks out, how many times we've had coffees at Starbucks with potential investors, potential partners, and they just ghost you, right? And the people that actually invested the, the biggest amount of money in our startup was a former student and his dad. And they live in a townhome in Northern Virginia, right? And, wow. I, and I'm, like, I'm like on the hustle for this network that I have of a guy who built a $10 million mansion yeah. Who's got an indoor basketball court and I'm like, Hey, you know, can I get some can I get some startup money? And the guy with the mansion you can't get money from, but the people want to live in the townhouse, they wrote you a bigger check than you could ever, ever, ever believe. So that constant failure of just trying, that that's one of the lessons from from being in the big family that um we weren't we weren't rich by any stretch. My dad was a public school teacher and he had you know, nine people in the house to feed. Yeah. And so there were a lot of times that I wanted a new pair of shoes and I'd go to my mom and be like, Hey, can I get some new kicks? And she'd be like, ask your dad. And I'm like, I don't want to ask my dad. And she, my, you know, the mess at my, my mom's like, what's the worst he's going to do? Tell you no. And like that stuck with me of like, if I just ask a thousand people for a million dollars for startup money, what's the worst they're going to do is tell me no. But that yeah. one person, that one person one says yes. who says yes, takes one, yes. All, guess, of changes the, all of a sudden you yeah. have seven digits in your bank account and, and then you're going after what you're doing. So um, there, there's definitely been a lot of failures of potential relationships or partnerships or investors. But it's one of those things that you fail fast and then you just move forward. Yeah. And I'm sure you learn a lot through like, because when, when last time we were down, we were talking about like this investing or this like funding mm -hmm. marathon that you're running right now. Yeah. And like, I think the one thing that's super interesting is that I'm sure you could go out and get your money tomorrow if you lowered your standards. And is, is like, does that come into play? Like, have you had instances, obviously not using names, but like, I'm sure you've had instances where you, you reach out to a person, that person has X amount of money, but they also want you know, like more of the company or then they want to, you know, then you get into like sticky situations. Like, have you had to say no to like a lot of money because of a situation like that? This time last year from September to November of last year, I was, I think I shared with you guys, yeah. I, I thought we, we were talking about, I thought yeah. we were pretty, pretty good slam dunk of having a seven figure investment. Yeah. And <clears throat> we had a family vacation that happened over Thanksgiving but they still wanted to chat. So it was literally like the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. We're on family vacation. And I'm like, I'll, I'll take the meeting. We'll do a video call. I'll do it from the car while my kids are on vacation. So we did it. And at that moment with this group, things started getting a little squirrely, yeah. right? Like like what you're saying, that the, the asks started getting a little bit. A little eh, bit bigger and pushing and, a little more. And, and so the, I had to take a step back. Mary and I kind of quick conferenced and then I, I reached out to three or four folks who had never been in the process. And I just said, Hey, can I steal you for 30 minutes? And can I just tell you these people may be bringing this much money to the table, but they want, they want this, this, and this. Yeah. And the people that were completely unattached to the situation, they're like, run. 
just run. Yeah. And so that was a that was definitely a big failure. That was definitely a big learning lesson of there like there's some people out there that that are just here to take advantage of you. And they may get to that million bucks, but they they don't have your best interests in mind. Yeah. And so that definitely has been for us a part of the process that we were like very very choosy about who we let into the circle. Yeah. And and I mean and that'll add years to your, you know, your journey. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that'll also the longevity and like the the successes that you'll find, I think will be will definitely outweigh that kind of, you know, those like divots that you go through. That's but the... like, <clears throat> so Gary V talks about um, the short term hustle, long term patience. Yep. And I got, I mean, that's got to be like, put that on a t shirt and put your face on it. It's like I mean, every day. I don't know if you did it today, but most, you know, every day is where when you're on Instagram and stuff on exercise simple, you always see you're out running in the morning or you're doing your workouts with your kids in the back. So like, <clears throat> I, I mean, honestly, I just got to commend you because that's pretty remarkable that, I mean, how old are you now? 39. <clears throat> wow. Almost the big. F- <laughs> wow. I thought your 30th birthday was like yesterday. <laughs> True. No, you. I'm something like that. A- age For me, age is the number though. Yeah. I mean. That's what you make of it. Yeah, for sure. I'm stronger and healthier and everything than I was. A lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Than the vast majority of people. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, honestly, it's just a commend. Like, that's crazy. I appreciate that. That you're doing all this stuff. And I think it's, I, you know, it definitely speaks to people. So my my process is Monday through Friday, I'm a robot. Okay. Pure robot. Yeah. And it used to be up in the 4.30 to 5 a.m. Monday through Friday. Since COVID, I've had to bump it to, to four as my as my wake up. Uh, yeah. Especially with kids, at, like we have three kids at home doing this homeschool COVID distance learning <laughs> for like the past six months. And, and so we're on day one ninety six, I think, something like that. And so I had to I had to bump it up even earlier to like four a.m. hour. And the things that I just put out Monday through Friday, every single day, I just put it. I say like I, this is what I tell my kids like. I have a two, a four, and a six-year-old, and I say you got to ace it, ace it. Um, attitude, consistency, effort. You just got to ace it every day. Attitude, consistency, effort—they're all free. Yeah. Those are the things that are going to separate the vast majority of us. And so I get up, exercise. I'm, I'm normally done with my exercise before like five, five fifteen. There are some mornings that I'm still coaching people, um, but for the most part, it's get up and get all of my super creative productivity stuff done so that we can be the best dad. Mary works from nine to five. She's got a normal nine to five job. Yeah. So from eight fifty five AM to five something, I got three kids that I need to be a, you know, trophy hubs and stay home and run that and do all that. Um, <laughs> You're nine to five and as a teacher now. And then, you know, after 5 PM, then Mary and I basically high five, she takes over and then I go and, and run it until, I've been trying to get to bed at like nine o'clock, which is kind of tough. I'm I'm in that six and six and a half hours of sleep kind of thing. Um, but I mean, it's not terrible. It's it's, you know. it's the coolest thing in the world. So yeah. but today's today's a Sunday, so I, I slept in until six. Ooh, right. Wow. But I was still up and fired off yeah. an email before seven to a guy that I had a meeting with yesterday on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. And so for me. You know, people say like, if you love what you're doing, you never work a day, and I and I definitely I definitely believe that, but that doesn't pay the bills. There's a practice, yeah. And so like the Gary V thing and all of these people that we follow, I think right now everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. Everybody, it's it's, it's, it's all really over social, flashy. right? Yeah, it's very flashy. But nobody wants to be a small business owner, and and really that's what being an entrepreneur is. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to do that 4 a.m. workout yeah. and read your business book at 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. Everybody just wants that. Let me just post a photo here of me with this car on this vacation doing this cute quote. The vast majority of people want elite yeah. when in reality they need every day. And that's something that I'm yeah. trying my best to like put out to the world. If I can help one more person every day, that's my goal in life. It used to be just one person a, a year. Then it's I can get I can I can I can help one person a month. And right now my goal is to help one person a day. Just help them. 
be healthier, healthier, happier, stronger. One person a day, that's 300 people plus that I helped in a year. Yeah. And so at the end of my days, when that sun goes down on me for the last time, there will be, my story will be told by the thousands of people that we just put a little bit of good in their world. Um, and what there, there's, there's no dollar sign that, that will ever be connected to that. Yeah, that's incredible. Well, okay. That was a perfect ending to the YouTube segment. So thank you guys for watching. We're going to take a brief intermission and then we'll be back.